the realms of cheap fiction, Chicago's tough west side, and the birthplace of a notorious son. Jack Ruby, small-time hoodlum and runner for Al Capone in the 30s, based his life around gambling, narcotics, and prostitution. His carousel club in Dallas was one in a long line of unsuccessful nightclubs, where Ruby often played host to members of the Dallas police force and the criminal underworld. A fitness freak, Ruby swam in this pool at his apartment every morning. But internally, his life was in chaos. In the months preceding the assassination, his phone calls from the carousel club and this apartment to well-connected mob figures increased 10 and 20-fold, a pattern which had begun with the announcement in late April of President Kennedy's intended visit to Dallas. A distinguished journalist who knew Ruby well was Seth Cantor. In the weeks immediately before the assassination of the president, unaccountably, Ruby had visits from some members of the underworld who he had not even seen in a period of something like 20 years. In uh, May of 1963, uh, Ruby traveled to, uh, to New Orleans to negotiate for uh, one or more strippers for his club and dealt with a man named Harold Tenenbaum there. But New Orleans was and, uh, and has continued to be uh, controlled by uh, a very powerful mafia figure named Carlos Marcello. Marcello, a leading target of the Kennedy brothers' war on crime, had sworn vengeance against them. His interests in Bourbon Street were first visited by Ruby in June 1963, ostensibly to recruit fresh flesh for his carousel club. This dancer at the show bar, known as Jada, was signed up by Ruby. But was she the cover for more serious underworld business? Ruby's uh, connections with nightclub people in New Orleans meant that one way or another he was dealing with uh, Marcello Associates. He had uh, telephone contacts and personal contacts with various well-known gunmen and thugs who regularly uh, serviced the underworld in Chicago, Miami, Las Vegas, Houston, and in New Orleans. These underworld links were never investigated by the Warren Commission, who found no evidence of a conspiracy. They also found no connection between Ruby and Oswald. I told you earlier this morning, I don't, I think it's a waste of time. I had no chance whatsoever. Starting new evidence of a conspiracy has emerged from a faded Polaroid photograph taken 25 years ago by Dallas housewife Mary Ann Mormon. Facing the grassy knoll, she took her picture of the president within one sixth of a second of the fatal headshot. Horrified by the experience, Mary Ann was never to use the camera again. Mine is a Polaroid, and I can only take one every ten seconds, and that was, it was at that time whenever I took it. No, I didn't. I must have sent it immediately when he slumped, because in the picture, he had way she's there, and he slumped over. From the moment the president was hit until today, the terrible secret within Mary's picture has remained hidden. To me, it's kind of uh, frightening to think that it that this could be, and no one has uh, found it or cared to look for it. I'm talking about our federal agencies, <laughs> that, um, that something could have been there all this time, and no one cared to do anything about it. But someone has. We will reveal for the first time the man whose image has come from within this picture 